Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Westside Collector Car Storage, or the future home of. I hope you enjoyed, or some of you enjoyed, my first video, which was 22 minutes long and about concrete and steel. A lot, of you, a lot more of you watched that than I thought we're going to, so thanks very much. Today, we're going to crank it up to the glamorous world of air and water. I know what you're thinking. Construction was already so glamorous. How do we make it even more glamorous? Well, we got to get a lot of air and water into this place and then back out again for fires, for storms, for ventilation, for all kinds of reasons. And I'm going to show you how that happens and why it's important in this video. Okay, so this is a big building that's designed to have cars running inside of it. So obviously you need a big exhaust fan system. So here inside the main warehouse, if you look up, we have a giant central fan and then sort of a spider of ductwork uh, emanating all four directions from it. Uh, one end goes all the way down over there and ends up over our car wash bay. Two ends go to either side and end up in that corner and that corner and then the one end that they've just installed ends up here at the end. Sort of just a big four-way deal. That system flows 36,000 cubic feet per minute of air. We then have a second system for our downstairs. This is all, this is how big <laughs> the ductwork actually is. It's like bigger than like a, a dining room table. Um, right here is where our air comes up from the system downstairs. That is a stairwell, so there will be a room built around the stairwell. This duct will go up and over, up the side of the building, and out that way. So that's the second system for downstairs. Here, this just got delivered. We have big, big hunks of duct, pre-measured and pre-cut. So they go up and down in the scissor jack and then just do, 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 add it in. So it's actually only going to take them about a week to do the entire uh, duct work up here which is pretty cool. Let's go look at the system downstairs. Okay, this corner, which is probably the best lit corner in the whole basement right now, is a perfect place to show you two things at once. This is our, uh, our exhaust fan setup. It's a beautiful bit of ductwork that runs all the way around the circumference of the basement. It goes the entire way around, and it has, I think, 12 or 14 uh, intakes, just like this, covered in blue tape. Right here is where it goes up through the floor and outside. And uh, the one down here is on a carbon monoxide sensor, right? So there's sensors all over. When it detects that a car has been running or multiple cars are running, the levels are obviously conservative and safe, but it's time to turn it on, kicks on, it's fully automatic, I don't have to do anything. The one upstairs has a more manual control on it because um, the main warehouse is not air conditioned. The offices, the members lounge, all that, the studio is air conditioned, but not the main warehouse, which is heated, not air conditioned. So we plan to use that exhaust fan as cooling as well as uh, uh, emissions exhaust. So that's why. Then we're going to start looking at sprinklers. Yay, sprinklers! Um, <clears throat> Sidebar, asterisk, they're not done. What I'm showing you guys is an active construction site. You're not looking at finished work. What we're looking at is layout. Before we talk about sprinklers and before we talk about storm drains, we gotta talk about my fire hydrant. And when I say my fire hydrant, of course I don't mean my fire hydrant, it's a city fire hydrant. But there are laws regarding how close or far a fire hydrant must be from your building. building. This fire hydrant is 75 feet from the door to the building. The rule says that it has to be, I think it's 120 feet or maybe 150 feet, within 120 feet or 150 feet. But when the fire department looked at our plans, they weren't happy that this fire hydrant, which is 75 feet from the building, as is the code, but it's from the back door. They wanted a fire hydrant that was close to the front of the building. Now the problem is, we looked into that, and because there's a traffic light here, because there's other utilities, there's no main, water main, we couldn't actually build a closer fire hydrant. If we wanted to build a fire hydrant, 
at the front of the property, it would have to be all the way across the street, <laughs> across Sentinella, almost 200 feet from the front of the building. Because of that, we are able to allow the fire department, well, sorry to say, we were able to convince the fire department to allow us to use this lovely little fire hydrant 75 feet from our back door. What does that mean really? It means if there's ever a fire, they're gonna have to smash the windows. Okay, smash the windows. <laughs> if there's a fire, I don't care, put it out. Let's talk for a second about where the water goes. Okay, so we have two systems here at Westside Collector Car Storage. We have your basic plumbing, right? Your sinks, your toilets, your basic water heaters. That's like anywhere else. It's not particularly exciting. We have two small little water heaters under each sink. Our plumbing just goes, the poo goes right to the city. Nothing to write home about. What makes construction here in LA interesting, well, depending on your use of the word interesting, is something called LID, that's low impact development. And what that means is, among other things, you have to clean your rainwater. So up on our roof, we have all of these drains. Now those drains come down pipes on the inside of this wall, one of which pops out right here. This bit of dirt that we're standing in here is going to be a massive planter 100 feet long, fed by this roof rainwater. Now, it's not just any planter. It's planted with specific plants in a specific way so that its job is to clean the rainwater, okay? And then the rainwater goes through these layers. It's like sand, dirt, gravel, you know, the roots of the plants. There's very specific plants you're allowed to use, only certain types of plants. And then where does that rainwater go? Out the sidewalk right there and onto the street. <laughs> so, so we are required to scrub all of this rainwater before dumping it onto the street, where, which is, Probably the, I mean, I don't know, the dirtiest thing around is probably the street. So that's the law, that's what happens. So from the roof down here, spread out into these nice looking plants. And then once it's filtered and clean, boom, right, right onto the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, we have another one of those planters over here. So the drain pipe from that corner feeds that planter, but the drain pipes from this corner come down over here and feed this giant planter from that pipe right there sticking out of the wall. And then this planter uh, serves a second purpose because this planter doesn't just filter water from the roof. This planter also filters water from our storm drain sump pumps in the basement. I've decided that we're gonna work our way back downstairs. Uh, up here, as far as drainage goes, we have our wash bays. One drain here and one drain that you can see over there. That one will be indoors, this one will be outdoors. What makes us unique uh, in Los Angeles is that we have permitted wash and detail bays. That means we have oil water separators, which I'll show you downstairs, so we can actually wash cars legally on site, indoors and outdoors, with water. That is a, a rare thing. So let's go look at that downstairs. As we come downstairs, I, I'm on my way to show you guys the drainage, and I'm reminded of a pretty common question from the first video, which is why is there not a drain right at the bottom of this ramp? If it rains on the ramp, it comes down into the basement, right? And my contractors who have done a lot of this thought of that. The original idea was to put the drain right here. But while we were drafting plans, they worked on another building where they did that. They put the drain right at the bottom of the ramp. What happened? The water was moving so fast <laughs> that it went right over the drain. It wouldn't drain. It would go whoop right over and flood the whole basement. So instead, what they did here, they didn't want that to happen again. So this comes down. What you can't see is there's about a four inch uh, grade towards the inside wall. And then there's the drain over that you saw on the side, the drain over here. What happens is the water comes down the ramp, it slows down at the bottom because of the grade 
it hugs this inside wall all the way around. In fact, they tested it this morning. You can still see it's a little wet on the floor here. And then, it, and then boop, it hits this drain. And see how it just kind of spreads right out a little bit along this drain? So the science, I don't know if it's a science or an art, we'll never know, but the tests show they've, they have cranked water down here. The water flows just so beautifully into this drain, and they thought that was a better move than putting the drain right at the bottom of the ramp, as conventional wisdom would dictate. The sprinkler system is fed from the city, from this corner of the building. It's fed from a six inch pipe at 3,000 gallons per minute. That is the maximum the city water will flow on its own. Not unintentionally, or I should say intentionally, my system, which has 90 heads in the basement alone and another 80 upstairs, okay, it's over 150 heads on the system, that requires exactly the same amount, it's 3,000 gallons, and it's designed that way because if it required even 3,100 or 3,200 or 3,300 gallons, what I would have to do then is put an auxiliary fire pump on the roof and on the roof because that's the only place it would fit. We've used every other inch of this building. You gotta put that on the roof. Then, because there might not be power in a fire, you have to have a diesel backup generator. But you have to put that on the roof too. Why? Because the emissions from the diesel the law says that even if your building is on fire and you need a diesel generator to run an emergency fire pump, that the emissions from that generator are the problem. So having to put a fire pump and a diesel generator on the roof would have meant that I have to not only plumb from the basement to the roof and back, but reinforce the roof for the weight of that stuff. So if we didn't get the 3,000 gallons a minute exactly right, I would have had to buy a generator, a fire pump, I don't know, 300 extra feet of plumbing and reinforce the roof. That's how important getting that right was. <laughs> and then as you can see, again, it's not totally finished work, but as we look around here, this has I don't even know if you could call, there could be more coverage. There's heads everywhere. <laughs> They're all over. They haven't installed them upstairs yet. I can't show you, because they ain't there. I'll show you next time. Come look at some pumps. Now, it's about pumps. It's about storms. There's a huge hurricane comes through and just crazy amounts of water. It overwhelms that main drain. These are our two sump pumps. They are ridiculously powerful. One is for sewage, in case we are somehow overwhelmed with poo. The other is for storm water. That one comes from our storm drains upstairs, as well as our storm drains uh, down here, which the lowest point is over here. I think when we did concrete, I talked about how the whole floor was sloped. So the whole floor slopes down to this corner, and this drain right here, which doesn't really look like much, this drain, combined with that pump, will dump 70 gallons per minute, so like, yeah, 70 gallons, a bunch, in a minute, into that big planter upstairs. So even the storm water has to get filtered through the planter. So all that water that comes down here goes up through that pump, out, and that's, uh, and that's what we do, that's what we do with our water. Is there any more water I need to show you? I don't think so. 3,000 gallons a minute for the fire system, uh, 36,000 cubic feet a minute for the upstairs ventilation system. I don't know what downstairs is, but it is clearly more than sufficient. And um, a lot of storm drains and uh, low impact on the environment because we're cleaning our rainwater here. So that's air and water. I hope you guys um, got a, a primer on what it's like to build uh, here in LA. Uh, and what you have to deal with. We're gonna talk about the lifts 
and we're gonna talk about interior decorating in some of our upcoming videos, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this though. Thanks for watching. If you wanna park your cars here, uh, we are now taking applications for early reservation from now until we open. Go to westsidecollectorcarstorage.com to learn more.